Hi folks, let's take the brand new Tormach 3 quarter inch TTS hog shear and let's experiment with some feeds and speeds and figure out what we can make this thing do. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC folks. If you want to just skip this and jump right to where we're doing the cutting, I'll post a link right here for the, or the time you can skip forward to. But first I want to talk a little bit about why I really love this tool and why if you own a Tormacher or any sort of a smaller machine, you should absolutely have one. For years, years, I used this tool here and I loved it. We've done a video on it. It's been very reliable. I love it, but it's expensive. It's a $50 or so solid carbide three flute roughing end mill. It was my go-to tool. One of its shortcomings is though, even though it's a roughing corn cob end mill that's supposed to break up the chips better, is you can pack the chips in there and get chip weld, which will instantly ruin the, usually the cutter and the part. So that was sort of one thing that you didn't love about it. And then it's just expensive. And a great point to that is this was a tool that was only a month old and I dropped it. And when I dropped it, I chipped that one tooth and it's toast. It's, I mean, you could treat, you could try to only cut on the higher shoulder, but it's, it's basically toast. So what stinks is you're paying $50 for a whole bunch of carbide and I just ruined that little tip. You know, insert tooling is a whole other world and by and large, uh, for us smaller machinists, you can get away with, on the mill with not focusing a lot on insert tooling, but this is an example where you absolutely should. And the folks at, um, at AB who grind these and make these shear hogs do a great job. We did a video on getting a pretty good amount out of the one inch tool. The problem with that is it doesn't have a TTS ready adapter, so you'd have to reset your Z each time. So Tormach hooked up with AB, which I think, by the way, was because of our video, which is kind of cool. Sometimes we forget that we make these videos and you just talk to the camera, and I know you see the view count, and we hear from a lot of viewers, but it's cool to see an impact you make and, and that deal sort of come together. So this is their three quarter inch version, and I have no problem with three quarter inch over one inch. I will say one thing I don't like, and I think they may have already fixed it, is you don't have as much relief on this backside here. We'll zoom in on that as you do on the on the one inch. And I was getting, you can see this tool's already, we've been playing with it and we've been creating some rubbing on it, but still an absolute great tool. Obviously now it has the repeatability and is it's ATC, the TTS compatible. So it's a real win. When we first were running this tool, I goofed and I actually swapped it out with uh, an HSM op where I was using tool 11. I had too much of a depth of cut to where I was cutting beyond the insert and we dinged up the, the insert itself. And you couldn't tell, but remember a couple of videos ago on that manual layout contest that we did sort of replicating Tom Lipton? We had a loop or a magnifier. You should have one of these around the shop. And all I had to do was zoom in and look and sure enough, you could see that that chip that was cut. Now, honestly, I'm still gonna use it. We're not gonna use it today because we're trying to get the most out of it, but probably still fine for a while. But that's the beauty of insert tooling is you're only buying a little replacement part this single flute tool is not going to chip weld, just not. That's a huge relief for me. So folks, from a job shop business or machine shop operational side, this tool is incredible. Let me tell you, it will be used and I bet 90% of our jobs because it's a simple, you know, one, two, three type punch where you use this to hog everything out. You come in with finished end mills. You get, you know, you've got great uh, depth of cut or, or reach rather, uh, it's just, awesome it's just awesome the last thing i'll mention is when you own a tool like this you absolutely need to keep extra inserts on hand i don't care there's no excuse not to for us it's such an important tool that if it goes down it's just so disruptive they're not that expensive keep them on hand folks seriously so with that let's hop into fusion 360 create a really quick part show our feeds and speeds calculation and the tool path and then we'll go make some chips create a two-point rectangle on this plane I'm just going to sketch and we're going to say it's 1.5 by 5 inches. And what we're going to do is sketch a circle in the middle just so we're just not doing more than facing it off. So you'll see I can find the X center. We'll make it a 1 inch. Now I don't have a way to uh, center it, I don't know of at least, uh, along the Y. So I'll do sketch point. And I'll sketch a point here. That'll snap to halfway down that line. And then I'll just click select and I'll choose that point, hold down control, click that point and click horizontal vertical. That snaps those so that they're perfectly centered. I will right click, press pull, extrude that up 
like so. And then let's go back here and extrude up the center part. Press pull. We'll have to expand this sketch so we can see it. Click here. And then we'll just come up, say, 0.6. model cam 2d adaptive clearing for me it's tool 41 now the default speeds and feeds we've got here are 4,000 rpms and 10 uh it's here 40 inches a minute we'll choose our geometry all we've got to do is it's really easy is select here and then we'll choose heights the bottom height will be a selection of this plane and we're going to adjust this, so no stock to leave. Optimal load of 0.3, that's fine. Click OK. I love it. Look at that, folks. Look how quickly you get great toolpaths. Now, let's pop open G Wizard here and take a look. And you can see we've got a 6061 with a 3 quarter inch uh, end mill, single flute, 0.3, sorry, 0.2 depth of cut, 0.3 three width of cut at these speeds and feeds it should be plenty of horsepower plenty of oomph in the machine to handle that cut we like to run our feeds and speeds in excel as well i think it's a really good way to get more hands-on so if we take a look at that recipe i'll explain this change here in a second about 800 service feet a minute with one chip load per tooth this is just copied in from g wizard but here we actually create the output so this is telling us if we want to run three-quarter end mill with one flute at about 800 service feet a minute, you're going to be at 4,000 RPMs and 20,000 chip load per tooth. That's a big chip per tooth, folks. We're actually going to start at 40. Now, we're going to keep the surface feet and RPMs the same. So what that means is it's just going to be a 0 0.01 chip load per tooth. But can we cut deeper? We've had no problem cutting deeper with our one-inch hog shear. However, someone had told me, and I'd love for someone to chime in in the comments below, that with insert tooling you're either I can't remember whether it's that you're not supposed to cut um, you're supposed to stay below the screw or the halfway of the insert or you just can't cut along the plane of the screw so you need to be, have a depth of cut that's either below or above the position of the, the screw uh, and I can't explain why that is or if it's even true but I've not had a lot of luck cutting deeper than 0.2 inches with this particular one and that may actually have to do with again in fact, there isn't quite enough relief back here, which I think they're fixing. But for now, let's run this recipe and see how we get along. Really, pretty good service finish. You'd want to come clean it up with the finish end mill, especially on these side profiles, but getting the material out of there, that was 2.4 cubic inches a minute, uh, about a little under half a horsepower. Let's, let's not mess around here, folks. Let's just double it. 80 inches a minute, same 0.2 inch depth of cut, 0.3 inch width of cut. That'll be a 4.8 cubic inches a minute and just under one horse uh, of spindle power required. Let's see how she runs. cow folks wow this is really cool when we talk about chip load per tooth this is what it is see this one on the left that's thinner that was the first cut that's 10 thou per revolution or per tooth there's only one tooth here this one is the second one you can see how much thicker that is isn't that really cool so 
awesome, folks. Seriously, awesome. I love this tool. Like I said, I'm not BSing you when I tell you that we use that on almost every job shop job. I was just talking about that the other day, how, look, holding material is expensive. Having every different type of extrusion and size and availability, you got to work with what you got on hand. And sometimes if it's a little bit too big, you got to get those chips out of there. And that tool is the way to do it. They can plunge. Not that that's great to do in terms of machine rigidity, but they can plunge. They can do a lot of side profiling, cutting. We love it. I don't feel like I've nailed this tool down just yet. We wanted to do a video because we had a lot of folks asking. I think it's been a popular tool and for good reason. So there's a good starting point for you guys. But I think the trick is going to be to do a bigger depth of cut and a similar width of cut, something like 40 to 60 inches a minute because it seems a little bit easier on the machine. Maybe it's a little bit higher quality cut. Maybe in some situations you could use that as a finish quality for a rougher part. Um, but I want to increase that material removal rate if we can. You know, we got it up to like six on the one inch tool. So I'm going to learn more. I'm guessing and hoping that some of you guys are going to have comments that are helpful. So post them below. Otherwise, take care. See you soon.